Rather than lads, welcome back to Kosi's Arsenal Podcast. My name is Kosi. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in all parts of the world. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to a brand new video. It's been a very long time. I've been away. I've been trying to figure out things here and there. The new studio that I promised before, um, the new season, it's been a, it took a lot of time. But definitely and finally, uh, here we are. We take on Crystal Palace today. The manager, Mikel Arteta, spoke to the media, spoke about a couple of things. We're going to be diving into um, exactly what he was talking about, the transfers, um, of course, a bit of business still happening in terms of outgoings and also incomings. Uh, but I think what is important there uh, in, in the things he spoke about um, was the injury update on, on, on players like Tomiyasu and Fabio Vieira as we begin the season. We take on Crystal Palace. It's not an easy game. And I think it's one of those games where you need your, uh, your maximum concentration. You remember last season when we played Crystal Palace... The results were a little bit not convincing because we lost to them a 3-0. One of the games that I really think that is why we didn't actually qualify for uh, the UEFA Champions League. And then the first one, it went 2-0. Um, I think Arsenal had a chance to win it. Then Crystal Palace had a chance to win it. Uh, but then Alexander, like I said, finding the, um, finding the net in the 90th minute to make sure that uh, both teams share points. So Mikel has been speaking about all that and what it means for us to play um, at the beginning of the season coming off a very very good uh preseason by the way we've really done in, in, well in preseason i think we've won six games um out of the available seven so we've done really well we've lost we've lost only one game uh, that was the the game behind closed doors uh we, against brentford but apart from that us have really done well in terms of um in, in terms of uh, preseason so we're going to be diving into Mikel Arteta and the words make sure you hit the like button for us let's get this video to um 800 likes and also subscribe to the podcast we're very close to 57,000 subscribers so Mikel has been speaking to the media and um I think, I mean, I mean, he spoke about a couple of things, but uh, let's run through some of uh, the key points here on how different uh, this game is going to be from uh, last season. And he says, well, it's different, obviously. Everything that happened uh, before the game was pretty, pretty strange and unique. The preparation, uh, the preseason that we had, um, it was a different. It was a different context. Uh, we are really excited. We are looking forward to the new season. We re uh, we will really try to start in the best way possible, and this is how we are focused um, on our pre uh, preparation. And I think it's right there. Uh, I think this is a very difficult, uh, different one from last campaign. Um, this one begins this campaign. It it it's, it comes in when Arsenal is in full form full gear i think we, we, look you could even argue that at the moment we've had the best preseason because we played as many games as possible probably i think liverpool as well have, have done as well played as many games as, as they can but i think we've we've played so many games and we've won many of them and i think it's, it's been a period where michael has, has gone this is what i want to see from my team this is what i want uh arsenal to play like and that is what we've done in preseason. And during that kind of transition, the likes of Alexander Zinchenko coming in and starting to play um, very well as inverted fullbacks. Uh, you have you have the likes of William Saliba now coming back and then being integrated into the squad very well and doing well. You have Tomiasu as well uh, playing in that uh, not really Tomiasu but Ben White playing in that right back position. Um, and then Thomas Partey is back to fitness as well. Martin Odegaard, Fabio Vieira. I think it's it's a it's, it's, it's a it's a period where Arsenal feel we believe in ourselves. We've done it during preseason. There is nothing that is actually going to stop us. So uh, I, I think this is quite different. Uh, then he also says on whether it feels like um, you know he has his team now. He says it's, it's, it has always been my team because these are our players. Uh, and uh, and always we had the intention to get the best out of them. It is true that obviously we have trimmed the squad and changed the squad massively in the last two windows, especially. Um, and you feel that now the players we have are more specific and better in the way we want to play, uh, basically. And uh, look, I think if, if you ask me, is there any uh, excuse for Mikel Arteta Kosi now? I think my answer is no. I don't think there is any other excuse for Mikel Arteta now. Um, this is his squad. These are his players. These are, you know, 90% of these players have signed 
under Mikel Arteta and Edu. From Ramsdale, Ben White, uh, Gabriel Megales, uh, you have the likes of uh, Alexander Zichenko now, uh, Alexander Zichenko now, um, Tomiyasu, Pate, Odegaard, Fabio Vieira, uh, Gabriel Jesus. These are his players and this is his team. So there is no way he's going to tell us that these signings were actually not deliberate. So he will either tell us they were not on point or he got them wrong. But uh, this is his team. And these are his players now. So I think he's done a great job in terms of, uh, you know, like washing away that wave of the Arsene Wenger, you know, players. Uh, and then that wave of uh, the Unai Emery, you know, uh, players, which I think uh, was actually not very, very influential. Because if you think about how many players um, Unai Emery signed, it's Kieran Tierney, it's William Saliba, it's... Um, it's it's Lucas Torreira. I think I, I think that period where Pablo Mari did come in as well, but I don't think th th those were really Unai Emery, uh, you know, signings and probably Nicola Pepe. So uh, he's tried to wash them away and try to create his own kind of uh, kind of way. Uh, on the expectation on Gabriel Jesus, he says when you bring in top players, they're coming from top clubs and they have been extremely. As successful over the years, they are going to expect that the role that Gabi has here is going to be very, very different to the role that he played, uh, that Gabi had in the previous club. Uh, that uh, that needs some adaptation and some time. He's done it. He's done it fantastically well, and we're all surprised how quickly he has actually done it. But we have to share uh, that responsibility. And he's uh, an enormous talent, a player with mentality that is so contagious, and is going to give us a lot. But it's a team contribution at the end of the day. Now, I did ask you when we signed Gabriel Jesus, how many players, uh, how many goals he, he was actually going to uh, score for us in your expectations. And many people told me, because he, he's going to score around uh, uh, 20, 25 goals. And, and I was really, really impressed. But to be to be honest, I think Mikola has a point here. You, you just cannot come out and say, look, he's, uh, he, he's got to score this many. Because he's done well as a player, you've got to upload him. You've got to be like, yeah, you've done well, and um, you know, congratulations. But at the end of the day, this is the Premier League. You're not going to score 38 games in a campaign. Uh, he's done well in preseason. He scored for us seven times in preseason and assisted once. Uh, literally, that means that uh, in all the seven uh, in all the seven games that we played, even including those that he didn't play in. He has actually scored, right? I mean, that is remarkable. He's scored in all our preseason games, including those where he didn't play, where he didn't feature. And that means that uh, per 90, he's guaranteeing us a goal or a goal involvement. He's either assisting or scoring uh, per 90. What exactly uh, more would you ask from a player like that? So I think it's going to take some time for him to, uh, to adapt into uh, his new role at Arsenal, being the face of the project, being the key you know, goal scorer in that team. It's different from 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 what he's been doing at City, because at City he's literally been uh, the feeding man, the second man. Um, at City, anyone can score. At Arsenal, the striker scores and then the rest uh, add up. You know, give you some more goals. Uh, on Crystal Palace's uh, prospects, they they showed us last campaign how tough they are and how difficult they are to beat, and how consistent they are at home as well. Especially against big teams, they, um, they got some great results. Uh, they had a great result against us, and hopefully uh, we learned from lessons. Uh, we learned uh, a lot of lessons that day, especially the 30 minutes that we had, where we were nowhere near the standards that we, uh, that we needed, uh, and we paid the price uh, for it. Yeah. Look, to be honest, my, my, my thoughts on... Patrick Vieira, because for me, this is Crystal Palace, yes, but it's Patrick Vieira, isn't it? We've got to be a little bit um, honest. It's, it's Patrick Vieira. The kind of football he's, he's taught them, the kind of consistency he's actually instilled in this Crystal Palace side, the way they set up, the way they love to play, the way they look like, like they're enjoying it, uh, the way they, f they make football seem enjoyable. Simple, lovely. It's it's Patrick Vieira, and I think 
we are going to play a team that is almost in the same shape as us. Now, probably not uh, exactly because we've done better business. We've done we've done better business for me uh, in the UK in the Premier League than any other side. So I think Crystal Palace. Yes, there is something to expect out of them, but not very very uh, uh, frightening. Um, on the excitement of the new season. Uh, and the new signings. It said, "I think we are all enthusiastic. We had um, we had the preseason that we wanted. Uh, it was well organized. We had good results, good performances, good preparation. But now the ball starts to roll tomorrow evening in a completely different context against the Premier League team, and we know what to expect there. It's difficult. It is true. We um we are with a level of energy and ambition to have a successful season, and we have to show that." On the pitch tomorrow night. So look, honestly, I think the excitement should be with the fans more. I mean, the team should have the excitement as well. Um, I'm not really trying to say Arsenal players should not have the excitement, but the fans should be excited because this is a campaign uh, we've been waiting for. A campaign where you feel your club is ready. A campaign where you feel you are ready to go. A campaign where you feel uh, no matter what happens. Arsenal will do something. So for me, the excitement is there. The preparations have been uh, have been good, and I do not believe in the you know this kind of uh, you know story tells in the books where you've had good pre when if you have good preseason, then you're gonna have uh, a, a bad season. No, uh, I don't believe in that. I think preseason is all about uh, preparation, and if you prepare well, there is I, I mean I don't know why people feel preparing well. Uh, is actually a problem in my opinion if you prepare well then uh, everything moves you know moves in the right direction so uh, i think there is some kind of excitement i hope uh, it doesn't actually end there uh, on whether there will be new players coming in more players coming in this is uh interesting because this is what you people want exactly it says we are really active as you can see with incomings and outgoings everything is still open it's a long window a lot has happened already it's incredible and how much business the clubs have done across the premier league and it shows how competitive it is and this season is going to be so uh playing uh, players are going to have uh the need to leave some others to move and everything is still very very open um if, if you have not actually followed the Premier League and uh, how other clubs have actually done business, you're, you're, you're missing out. Uh, Spurs, United, Chelsea. I think Chelsea is kind of underrated. Their business is kind of underrated. But with Raheem Sterling, Khalid Koulibaly coming in and then Marco Kurela, one that they actually didn't need, but I, I think he improves them. Honestly, I think he improves them very, very soon. The 90 more podcast should be coming out. Um, and that, th those are some things we, we will be digesting. But for me, I think he improves them. I think Kukurele improves Chelsea uh, better than Chilwell, better than um, anyone, better than Alonso. I don't know why anyone would think he doesn't improve them. So, Mikel has a point there. Uh, clubs have really done a lot of business. So, if you're going to cope up, then you definitely need to think how many more do we sign how many more do we need to sign and for me 10 20 25 get them all in as long as they're quality as long as they improve us as long as they add something uh i'm absolutely fine with it i'm absolutely okay i just need the numbers coming in um on whether the all or nothing documentary release was a distraction um i, I just I, I, you know guys i just don't like the all or nothing that's why i, I don't speak about it Honestly, I, I watched a few clips of it and I just don't feel a part of it. But it says, um, no, well, uh, the distraction or the attraction uh, was, like, uh, was last year, having them here every day. At the, end of the, uh, at the end, we try to work together, try to make sure that whatever is produced is a reality of how this football club is run. The passion of its people, the aims and the responsibilities that we all have to make it work how much we care for the club uh and how much the in, and how much enjoyment we are going to bring to uh our people uh on the injured players i wanted this because um i mean literally w w w as i do my predicted lineup uh i have to dive into who is on and off so on the injured players it says three out of four of those uh, that is tomiyasu smith Rowe, 
Carantian and Fabio Vieira are going to be in training this afternoon and if everything goes well they will be available for selection and in the squad hopefully we can't start to recover uh, hopefully uh, we can't start to recover because they are going to be missing a lot of minutes and time in preseason and they are really important players for rice now uh, listen I, I think Emil Smith Rowe and Fabio Vieira being out at the same time, that is a blow because Martin Odegaard needs that kind of cover. But I think for the beginning of the season, one or two games, I don't think that is uh, something to be scared of. Maybe what we can say here is Fabio Vieira playing in that, uh, you know, Granny Jaka role. Because I think at the beginning of the season, it's going to be Pate Jaka, right? Uh, but we've already seen. I mean, we're going to, I'm so sorry, but we're going to look at how Arsenal should be setting up this season and how Mikel Arteta is going to set up um, and our season guide and our season expectations and things like that. But I think we are going to see much of an Arsenal side that plays um, a, a, a midfield three in uh, in attack where you have Ben White, Otomiasu and Alexander Zchenko flanking Thomas Partey. Now, that means that creates a more advanced role for Granny Jaka and his technical abilities do not actually suit that role. So for me, out of with all due respect for Thomas Partey, uh, he needs a better number eight. And if you if we're going to play with two number eight, two creative number eights, if you can call them tens, you can call them uh, attacking forwards, you can call them whatever you want. Then Arsenal definitely need someone like Yuri Tillemans or Fabio Vieira in that area so in the end um i'm gonna say yeah uh look listen fabio vieira smith ball should be coming back uh very soon but i think uh the one we should not actually uh you know skip is tomiyasu's absence because without tomiyasu that right back position is um is is is, a, is kind of a mess yes uh, ben has played there ben white has played there and he's actually done well in preseason We've seen Mikel Atta play Ben White, Saliba, Gabriel Magalis all together. Uh, and many Arsenal fans really excited. Personally, I, I don't think it's all about that. Um, whether they play together one or two games uh, or they never play together, I think there is going to be um, some kind of squad rotation at the moment. And that's why I'm not really, really you know, even concerned uh, with how many more minutes is, uh, Saliba, is going to, uh, Saliba is going to get uh, or if he's a starter or not. So... Uh, the injury update, you have the four players out and uh, some of them, are, three of them are expected uh, to be coming back. Uh, on taking the knee, why would someone ask about this? Let's see. Uh, hopefully, it will be equally productive and we can still send a very important message um, that as a club, we obviously want to express that equality uh, is a massive thing for us. Everybody is welcome in our football club and in our industry. Hopefully, we c uh, and we need to maintain being strong on that message um well i, I used to think we should be uh, sending uh you know we should take a knee probably for people in uh, for the people in 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 uh in war torn zones not only uh for the you know discrepancies in terms of equality uh, but also you know in other areas but you know i you know i, I really don't even want to talk about that because there's so many ways to conclude and um just interpret taking the knee and at times it is baffling. I just want. I just don't want to talk about it. Uh, make sure you check out my season. Uh, my season predictions. They are uh, dropping very very soon. Um, I needed some kind of good environment and also editing, so they might drop a little bit later. But trust me, the video will be looking do good, top, and um, I think Arsenal will win the league. So I've, I've given you a hint. So make sure you check out that. Um, on the expectation around the club, uh, it says it's great that people are excited. But there is a lot. Uh, there is a big excitement across the Premier League because a lot of clubs have actually done a lot of business, getting stronger and stronger. The competition is really big. We focus on what we need to do. We uh, what we want to do, and we want uh, and, and and we want to be at the top of the table. Thank you so much, Mikael. That is exactly what I expected. Uh, we want to be at the top of the table, and you know, this might look crazy, but I've thought about it. And I think the Premier League season is going to be very difficult, but there is nothing that will stop Arsenal from being at the top of the table for some for some weeks. 
I, I think it will depend in, in, in any way. I think Liverpool are not, going to, are not going to start out strongest. I think City will not start out strongest. Um, believe me, you City have weakened a little bit. Yes, they have brought in Alling Harlan uh, and Kevin Phillips. Great signings. But the departure of Rami Starling, the departure of um, of Gabriel Jesus and Alexander Zichenko doesn't leave them in this, you know, in the same situation. And also there is some kind of burnout in that squad. No one puts that into consideration. And uh, look, we are talking about a Liverpool side here and a Manchester City side that literally played all, ge all games available last campaign because liverpool played all games available for them in their calendar played until the finals of the fa cup played until the finals of the carabao cup played until the finals of the uefa champions league and played until the final day fighting for the uh, for the fighting for the premier league uh with manchester city manchester city are not any different they played 38 games in the um, in the Carab uh, in the uh, premier league yes they might have not uh, done it um, to go to the finals of, uh, of 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 the Champions League, but where did they end? Semi-finals. Um, you have the FA Cup, you have uh, the Carabao Cup. So literally, there is some kind of burnout in that squad, and the expectations now are a little bit heightened because the Premier League is no longer anything to them now. They, they're becoming that kind of little PSG. Um, give us. Give us the Champions League, or, you, or, you, or you've actually done nothing. So, in my opinion, uh, Arsenal is a good challenge. Tottenham will be a good challenge as well. So, if my if my season predictions are that Arsenal win the league, just like Leicester City did it, do not be very very shocked. I think Antonio Conte will also give us a run for our money uh, this campaign. On the increased pressure on him as a manager, he says, watching the pressure that I had last year after one game, I don't think it's going to be uh, bigger than that. At the end of the day, people don't want to look at the context. They just look at the result and we and how we started. We are going to be judged on whether we win football matches or not. It's as simple as that. I think, look, I like the confidence there. I like the confidence because he's speaking with a lot of... Um, uh, with a lot of nerve and i think his resolve has been quite tested now uh for the past two seasons that's been a, uh, that that has been at arsenal you can't argue that he's one of the best managers with the strongest resolves now y you know not every manager says mm, i think we are going to be great I, I don't think every manager says that and i said i don't think every manager uh, i don't think every manager says uh we are going to be judged by winning games so when we win judge us when we do not judge us not every manager does that so i think michele's expectations are not to win the league uh, but i still remember william in his first interview he said michael told him that he wants to uh, wants to win th big things in three years now this is going to be michael Arteta's third complete season won't be very surprised if we win something like the Europa League is there. I mean, we should be hitting those underdogs like crazy. There is Man United, of course. I don't think. I think I read Ten Hag. I love him as a manager, but I don't think his squad is is there yet. Um, even when he, he, he introduces Frankie De Jong, I think there will be a lot uh, to learn uh, as um, you know as a philosophy and things like that. I don't think United will go past quarterfinals in the Europa League. I would be very surprised if they do. And I, I would be surprised if Arsenal don't reach the finals of the Europa League. I'll be very surprised if we do not. So, so look for me. I'm I'm not trying to judge him here, but I'm trying to say we are gonna win some silverware this campaign we will win some silverware this campaign it's huge silverware like the Europa League I'll take the Europa League over the Premier League you know why because we've never won the Europa League and that will be our first one and Chelsea have won it and Man United have won it recently and we need to win it as well so I'll definitely take it I'll definitely take it it's a crazy it's a crazy statement to say but I'll take it uh I'll definitely take it okay on Martin Odegaard as captain uh, it says uh, this season uh, the, we had the opportunity to do it in the way that I believe could work. Martin has been with us for 18 months now and in my opinion is a player who responds to the values of this football club in the perfect way. He's well respected by everybody around the team. He's admired by all the staff. He has the experience even though he's only 23. He's done it for the national team. He's a, you know, he's, he has the passion about the game that promotes every single day uh, uh, around the club and the way he plays. So I'm really, really happy to have someone like him um, and he's on the board. He's playing, um, uh, he's enjoying that responsibility 
and we uh, and he will really really uh need to support but for sure it's a huge thing for him as well now i still remember the last time mika um mikala tata no martin odegaard was speaking about the captaincy um you know he said bring it on give it to me i i think i will be um i will be able to handle the responsibility and you know eventually you know we've given them we, we've given him that responsibility and i personally think he will do well i i, I mean there, there there are a few things to be um concerned about no worries i mean it's it's football at the end of the day and with football you've got to be worried i mean what is football without worrying what is uh football without um you know jeopardy jeopardy is is one of the things i like about football and that's why i don't really watch uh you know many other games because at times it's very very automatic but with football you have leicester winning the league and now i think i'm going to predict them as relegated relegation battle fighters so that is uh football so martin Odegaard being a captain many people i, I was speaking to an arsenal fan yesterday he was installing my internet and he said the only captain figure in this arsenal side is gani jaka and you know what i think we we, we, we did um and uh, uh, it, it was kind of um an in-depth analysis of what captains do and we looked at the examples and Xhaka should be fitting into the likes of uh, Patrick Vieira, the likes of um, uh, John Terry. But I think, I, I think with modern football and and the way it, the way football is evolving, you can even argue that my mother could captain a team because football has become so technical rather than you know the physical attributes that it had. I mean, you're vocal, you're strong, you're big. You've been here for some time. Your captain. I think that has actually changed. So that is Mikel Arteta speaking at, uh, ahead of our new season uh, on injuries. Like we said, nothing to worry about for players, but they are coming back very soon. Um, and then with transfers, nothing to worry about. Of course, uh, the transfer window is, is still open, and we're doing a lot more in terms of the business. See you soon.